Hi there Retro Core fans, and while looking for something for today's show, I thought um, I'd take a look in the old closet there and see what we've got. And um, I came across this book which I haven't read in quite a long time. Uh, I think I may have actually featured it on Retro Core at one point in the past, but um, since the show is now in HD, why not show it again? Let's take a look at the book in question. So let's take a look inside this amazing book. Well, being Japanese, it opens up back to front. And the first thing you'll see is a lot of sketch designs from Yusuzuki's arcade games of days gone by. In fact, this basic, uh, this basic book is all about his original first uh, big hit arcade games, such as Outrun and so on. Now, as you can see, it's all in Japanese, so it's not exactly uh, easy to read. Even for people who can read Japanese, I mean, non-native Japanese uh, speakers, that is. Um, it's quite a bit of a task. There's an awful lot in there to read. You know, it's got pictures of his uh, office and so on. Um, some of the really uh, good highlights of this book are early design concept sketches of various games. As you can see, we've got some uh, early design concept sketches of um, Hang On there. Some beautiful uh, early sketches. And we've got Space Harrier. And it, you know, it really goes on. We've got Outrun. And of course, uh, Afterburner, which is pretty cool. And one of my favorite games, which uh, Yu Suzuki made um, from the days gone by, is Power Drift. Now, I don't know why they put these American um, arcade flyers in the book because, uh, to be honest, they are a bit shitty compared to the uh, Japanese ones, but then again, I suppose they wanted to show uh, something a bit different that Japanese people haven't really seen. But what's really good about this book, as well as uh, all the writing that comes along with it, is this. Now you may notice, yeah, some information about a GD-ROM. That's right, the game, all the games featured in this book come on this lovely disc. This is uh, actually upside down. This is Yu Suzuki's Gameworks for your Sega Dreamcast. And if you just afterburner, hang on. Power Drift and Space Harrier. Tell you what, let's stick it in and check it out. I love the way it said Volume 1 on it. Not like Volume 2 will ever arrive. So as you can see we got this really cheap looking um, game select screen. And let's go straight with the oldest game, this is Hang On. Now this is the only game that actually features an option screen. And it's really weird because this is actually the same version of Hang On which was featured on Shenmue. And the only reason I know that is because it's still got all the Shenmue commercials in the background. But saying that the version that was used in Shenmue never had an option screen. Mm. So yeah, hang on, those look uh, really basic these days. Especially when you consider Super Hang On is uh, much nicer. But yeah, this uh, Sega, uh, Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast version is fairly decent. And like I said, anyone who's played this game on Shenmue will know what this version of the game is like. Because it's the same game. Okay, I'm moving on to one of my favorites of this time. This is Space Area. Again, I do suspect that this is the same version that was featured on uh, Shenmue. But who can argue with that because it's pretty much arcade perfect. And for those of you who have never played Space Area, well the idea is fly into the screen and blast away everything in sight. Simple as that. 
The original arcade came in uh, two flavors, a typical stand-up cabinet and a full hydraulic cabinet. The hydraulic cabinet was amazing at the time. The whole um, cabinet would, you know, go tilt forwards, backwards, left and right. Oh man, it was something special. I remember Alton Towers in the UK used to have one, and we used to play it every single year we went there. Well, until they got rid of it, that was. Probably one of the most loved of Yu Suzuki's classics. This is Outrun. Again, like the other games so far, this was featured on Shenmue, but not Shenmue 1, Shenmue 2. Whether this version on Yu Suzuki Gameworks is the same as one that's on Shenmue 2, I couldn't really tell you. Probably is, though, to be honest. But again, like Space Area, who cares? It's pretty much okay, perfect. Okay, now this is what I'm talking about. This is Afterburner 2. Which is pretty much the same as Afterburner 1. Now this was another one of those famous Sega arcades. You sat in uh, a cockpit, you know, with a roof over your head and everything, and it tilted forwards, backwards, left and right, slided up and down. It was amazing at the time. In fact, it's still great fun to play even now. And yes, this is probably the same version of Afterburner 2 that was featured in Shenmue 2. This is stop it being a great addition to this collection though. And this is definitely the crown of the collection. It's Power Drift, a game which wasn't featured on any Shenmue game, but bet you any money it was planned for Shenmue 3, which never did arrive. Three, two, one, go. Now I checked this game out on MAME and I've checked it out here on the Dreamcast and it is pretty much identical. In fact, I think it is RK Perfect, which is fantastic news. Now surprisingly the Dreamcast is not the only Sega machine which got Power Drift. Originally it was planned to be released on the Mega Drive, then it moved to the Mega CD and that was going to be produced by Dempa. And uh, in case you didn't know, Dempa are actually Microsoft, the people who make the famous XRGB upscaling boxes. As well as many many very good x 68000 arcade ports. But fortunately the Mega Drive version never came around and needed the Mega CD version. But Power Drift did make it to the Sega Saturn 
and while it's not arcade perfect it's an amazing conversion so let's check it out side by side with the Sega Dreamcast version okay so we've got the Saturn over on the right the Dreamcast on the left now please excuse the difference in uh, color that's mainly due to the uh, connections being used uh, Dreamcast is running through S-Video and the Sega Saturn is running through RGB But so far, they look identical. Apart from the characters being different. Three, two, one, go! Now, I would say that the uh, Sega Dreamcast version does run at 60 frames a second, uh, while the Sega Saturn version runs at 30 frames a second. But you know, that's still fairly respectable. Graphically, they are pretty much the same, apart from the Dreamcast one runs at a higher resolution. But the Sega Saturn version does give you the option of a remix soundtrack, as you can hear right now. It actually just featured two different remixes of um, some of the tracks, as well as the original arcade music, just like the Dreamcast version. Actually, I like the arcade music better, so let's go back to the Dreamcast audio. Go for number one. Three, two, one, go. Now what you may notice about the Sega Saturn version is it actually rotates the entire screen. You can see we're at the top and bottom of the screen where it's actually on an angle and um, the spikes are being cut off due to the rotation of the screen. The Sega Dreamcast version seems to actually rotate all the individual sprites just like the arcade version did. So while the Sega Saturn version seems to be cheating by just tilting the screen, it still uh, pulls off a very uh, successful rendition of the arcade style graphics. In fact, you probably didn't even notice until I mentioned it. So that brings us to the end of Yu Suzuki's Gameworks. Excellent package for your Sega Dreamcast, but Power Drift really does it for me. Then again, you can always buy it for your Sega Saturn as well. You know, I'm really feeling in the mood for some classic 2D horizontal shoot map action. I tell you what, why not have a game of heavy unit? It's actually, it's actually uh, one of the uh, earliest um, Mega Drive shoot ups that I actually completed. And it also has some of the most interesting cheat modes in it. Let me just get out here. Doesn't look all that too special. Typical mech. And some very small screenshots on the back. But just take a look at the instruction manual. It actually tells you what the cheats are. Okay, so let's have a look in the manual. Typical Japanese uh, Sega Dreamcast manual, very colourful, gives you the background story and so on. Now here we go with the passwords. Not your typical passwords, these are actually cheating passwords. You can record your own game, you can uh, replay your own game, you can invert the colours, and you can actually change the colours to many different styles. It's got to be seen to believe actually, it's quite interesting to, be being, to put these in as default settings on a game. In fact, there's even more than this, just these passwords. Lovely. Anyway, enough looking at the book. Let's put the actual game in the machine and check it out. You may notice that this is called the Mega Drive Special Version, and that's because the game was released on the PC Engine as well as the arcade.
Now, having not actually played the PC Engine or the arcade version, I couldn't really say what was so different about them versions and the Sega Mega Drive version. But I can tell you one thing, a Sega Mega Drive game is really, really difficult. graphics were respectable, were not in that too special, but you know they did the job. The thing that really got the fans into this game was its hardcore nature, and to be honest, quite a quirky um, set of levels as well. Now watching me play the game, you might be a uh, thinking that this game is extremely easy. Well, yeah, it does look fairly easy, doesn't it? After all, you can switch from a spaceship to a mech. You know, it helps you out a great deal in some levels. But don't let that fool you, because while this game may look easy, it's not. It's extremely difficult. And the biggest problem is, is if you lose all your weapons, the game can be extremely unforgiving. You still have the same amount of enemies charging at you, and the same amount of bullets coming at you, and it's just impossible to get away from everything. As you're about to see right now, just watch how many times I die. Okay, we're going along, and yeah, I'm doing pretty well. And here we go, these things are chasing after me. I don't have enough speed ups. So I think I'm probably going to get killed around here somewhere. Oh, the fucking snakes, yeah. Got to remember the pattern of these things. Okay, well, we're not doing too bad. Oh, here you go, I'm dead. And again. And again. <laughs> no, I'm not putting this on. You should have heard me. It was like fuck all the way through that section. I must have died at least 20 fucking times, I tell ya. Drive me nuts. Now, it's not only the problem that you lose all your power ups, it's the hit detection on this game as well. The hitbox on your spaceship does seem to be a little bit off. So sometimes you've been getting hit by um, enemy projectiles and they'd be nowhere near you, or you'd swear they were nowhere near you. But you know what? It still doesn't stop the game being fun. Well, as long as you like punishment, that is. Now, one thing that makes this game unique are all the different passwords which you can put in, or the cheap passwords I should say. There's the ability to actually record your entire gameplay, so you can uh, play it back as a demo. Which was pretty cool, because then um, a lot of people didn't bother connecting their uh, consoles up to a video recorder while playing the game. There's also some passwords which allow you to um, change the colour palette on the game. And man, you won't believe how many different color palettes there are. So you put the little code in here on the password screen and just check out how many varieties of color you get. Nuts. Hey, see? Something for everyone. <laughs> 